Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, yeah, this is kind of funny to be both the track lead and to be presenting in the same track. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, so I would like to, uh, to start my presentation, uh, which is about my journey from becoming a Mautic user to becoming a core contributor to the project. Um, this has been, this has all been taking place in 2020. So a lot has happened so far. If you have any questions about the presentation, feel free to ask them uh, at the link below. I'll get to uh, to the questions at the end of the presentation. So uh, yeah, make sure to ask those questions if you have them. Let's get right into it. Um, I'll just start with the first slide. So yeah, this is me. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm Dennis, I'm from the Netherlands. Uh, at the bottom, you can see me with uh, with a bike and a windmill, which are typically a characteristic for the Netherlands. Fun fact is that this picture was actually taken in Taiwan. Um, so yeah, uh, it's, it's not relevant at all, but I thought it was a fun fact. Um, apart from that, I'm a technology enthusiast. So when it comes to technological innovations, no matter whether it's new gadgets, new software, etc., cetera, um, I'm always happy to see those and to, uh, to work with those. For example, you can see me here sitting upside down in the chair with a VR uh, VR thing on my on my head, and here you see where I'm I'm showing an, an older lady uh, what VR is, and she was completely fascinated. She had to uh, to make sure that she didn't fall because she was like looking up, so we had to hold her. It's uh, I think it's fascinating the things that are happening these days, um, and I try to combine that technological enthusiasm with entrepreneurship. So um, it, with my company, I actually help customers with their uh, IT questions and then mostly focusing on processes. So if they have a certain process, for example, sales process, I help them to map the customer journey. So what is happening from A to Z? Um, and there I try to, to help them by implementing new, new software or new processes uh, wherever needed. I'm also an active open source contributor, both in terms of code and strategy. Uh, I've been programming since I was 12, um, so it's for quite a while. And I think in the last few years, I've professionalized uh, a lot in terms of writing good quality code to work with best standards, etc. cetera. Um, in terms of strategy, I'm, I'm doing that partly uh, in my contributions for Mautic, for example, by joining the leadership team and the product team. And I very enjoy, very much enjoy working in a collaborative environment where we actually find what is best for the product and how to move forward. Um, yeah, so that's actually how I how I ended up with Mautic as well, because of my passion for technology and open source. Um, th yeah, that's uh, that's it about me in a nutshell. Uh, what I'll cover today is uh, the first moment when I uh, when I joined Mautic, which was. I think it was the end of 20, 2019. Um, then I became a, a core contributor to the to the product. And yeah, I, I've been here for around a year now. So I also want to give you a bit of an insight into, into what's next, both for me and in terms of, of Mautic, the things that I'm looking forward to. So um, I'll start with joining the community for the first time, because this was uh, quite an interesting moment for me. The, the way how I got in touch with Mautic was because I am volunteering for a foundation, which is called High Five Foundation. It's an organization in the Netherlands that organizes uh, five events per year for children who live below the poverty line. So those children aren't able to go to uh, the zoo, to the cinema, to do all these kind of events because their parents simply don't have the money for it. And it's very rewarding and energizing to work with a passionate team to make that happen and to uh, yeah to actually make those children happy. That's uh, that's just fantastic to do. Um, as you can see here, there's quite a lot of children, and it, the number has only been increasing, which in terms of society, of course, is not a good thing. Um, but it's great to see so much enthusiasm and energy from the children that you get back. Um, so as you can imagine. There's some logistical challenges as well. The more children you, you work with, um, the more difficult it, it becomes to manage everything. 
that goes for managing the, the volunteers and the participants in a computer system because you really don't want to have manual lists with, uh, with all these children. Um, the children also get assigned to a volunteer during an event because they're all under the age of 18, so they need to be supervised. Um, and that's, that's a challenge in itself because you want to make sure that everything runs smoothly, that the, that the children have a great day and that the volunteers know what to do. So that's how I uh, got in touch with Mautic because we needed a system that allowed us to, uh, to store all the participants and the volunteers. And that also allowed us to email um, all the, the participants and the volunteers to, uh, to basically invite them for next events. And that's what you see here. You see um, at the top, I can make it a bit bigger, uh, in the top left corner, you see an invitation that parents get. Um, the thing is, there's a lot of families that actually have multiple children. I've seen families with up to five or six children, and they all share the same email address. And if you've worked with Mautic, you probably know that normally um, an email address is a unique identifier. But we couldn't do that here because, uh, as I said, we have multiple children under one email address. So what we did is we gave every child their unique number, um, which is also printed on a card that they get as soon as they become part of High Five Foundation. On that card, we also have a QR code. So that code is actually the unique code for that child, which we also use to check them in during events. So as soon as they enter an event, um, they get scanned at the entrance. I mean, their QR code gets scanned and then they are assigned to a volunteer. And all of this has to happen in an instant because if you have 200 children waiting for you at an entrance to, uh, to go to an event, you want things to run smoothly and without any hassle. And uh, we were able to do that thanks to Mautic in combination with an app we built for uh, High Five Foundation. So as you see in the top left corner, the invitation what it does is that the parents, they receive an email with the invitation for the event. Um, they, if they click on the link, on the button in that email, they go to a specific page. Now, what this page does is it takes every child that is linked to that same email address and shows them. So if I have five children, for example, they can sign up all the children at once. And once they have signed up, they will automatically be put into a segment in Mautic, which allows us to see which children have signed up and uh, which is the foundation for us to uh, be able to link them to volunteers later on. So a lot of this we were able to automate thanks to Mautic and for example, the campaign builder and a lot of uh, automations that, that and triggers that are built into Mautic. So um, as soon as parents have registered their children, they get a confirmation email, of course, um, and they are also synchronized with the app that we built for the volunteers. So as soon as the volunteer enters the event, they will see on their phone which children are assigned to them. They can also take pictures of children. Uh, of course, those are removed at the end of the, of the event. But this is very handy because it can always happen that you lose a child. I mean, you never want it to happen. But imagine if you're in a large theme park or a zoo with more than 200 children, um, it, it can just happen. The chance is there. We've been doing this for around six years, and I think it just happened once, and the child was found within 15 minutes. But it's good to, to be aware and to have a backup plan. So as soon as a, um, a child is marked as lost in the app, all the volunteers at that event receive a push notification. So here you see the true power of Mautic and the, the integrations that you can build with it. So we use Mautic for basically as a CRM because we don't need anything more complex and we use it as a marketing automation tool. Then we synchronize it with, uh, with the app that we built and that's how we were able to, uh, to build a, a, a good solution for High Five Foundation. Um, and we've been using this for around a year now and everyone is very happy about it. Now your question might be then how did you become from how did you get from like a Mautic user to become a core contributor to the project? Because I've been 
um, doing quite some releases for the product in the last year. And I'll show you that in a second. So what I did is because of my technical background, I went over to GitHub and that's basically the technical platform where we manage um, the backlog of bugs, for example. Uh, so if I zoom in, you see two tabs here. You see there's uh, issues and there's pull requests. Now issues are in the past, they were also feature requests, but now they're, they mostly serve as uh, bug reports. So if there's something that isn't working properly in Mautic, people can go over to GitHub and report it there. We've moved feature requests to the forums because it's a more accessible platform and it allows people to, uh, to contribute more easily. But you also see in the same, uh, the same screen here that there's pull requests. Now a pull request is when someone, for example, contributes a new feature or uh, a bug fix. Now, when I first came here, the amount of issues was over 900 and the amount of pull requests were over 300. And I know from working with other software uh, solutions that having so many pull requests open often isn't a good sign. It's, you see very often that when that happens, the, the project team uh, or the project leads haven't been very active because of course someone can contribute some code but someone needs to approve it and make sure it ends up in actual product as well. Um, so that for me was, it was a red flag. And it also caused me to go over to Slack, which is Mautic's main communication platform together with the, the forum. And that's where I saw a, I don't know if you can really see it here, but it's where I saw a request for help with uh, working on Mautic 3. So this was in uh, January, January 14th. And then at the 21st of January, there was a, a question to release uh, the last, the, what we expected back then was the last multi two version. So I thought I have this technical knowledge, um, but also from like my company's perspective, I knew what my, what the users wanted and how I could contribute back to Mautic because already within weeks of using it, I had some ideas to, to improve things. Um, and I think the great thing about open source is that everyone can contribute. So that's what I wanted to do. Now, what happened here was that uh, I replied to both of the requests. So I helped a bit with uh, Mautic 3, but more importantly, I became the community release lead for Mautic 2.16.0, I think it was. Um, yeah, it was. And then here you see January 31st. So that is, if we look at the previous slide, that is uh, from the 21st to the 31st, within 10 days, we released a, a new version. And until up till there, there were months where nothing happened to the product. Like there weren't any new releases. And that was for a variety of reasons. Also because um, the product was handed over to Acquia. Um, there were, there were just a lot of things that weren't in place and that needed to happen to get things up and running again. But this is how it all started. So I, I was a Mautic user. I wanted to contribute something and I became community release lead. And to be honest, things got a bit out of hand. If we look at the, the next slide, there were uh, eight releases that I did since then, including the, the Mautic 3 release. Um, I mean, of course the releases are on my name, but there are so many great contributors in the community who actually make sure that they introduce new features, they fix bugs, but also not to forget is that uh, once you have the product up and running, there's technical debt. So there's things that need to be updated in the background that don't necessarily have any user impact, but still that need to happen because of security and stability reasons. So, Doing these releases were a great opportunity for me to really dive into the, the open source world a lot more and to, to show my, my contributions, the things I, I could do. So yeah, that's how I started as a user, then grew into this, this community release lead role. Um, and the more time I spent on working with Mautic, the more I was looking at, okay, where do I want to put my focus? because there's so many things you can contribute to in any open source project. 
it's not just code, it's also, for example, translating, because Matic is offered in many different languages. Um, designers, marketeers, testers, technical writers for the documentation. We need everyone in order to make the project success successful. And um, so I started to focus on, okay, where can I contribute most? And I noticed that those are code and strategy. Now, code, there's, there's quite some developers who are enthusiastic about Maltic and, and contribute stuff. Um, and I don't necessarily have to work on user-facing features. I mean, I'm also happy to do the, the under the hood work. Like I created the upgrade script for Maltic 2 to 3, which is a major, major upgrade. And a lot of things have changed. And I knew that from the previous releases, there were quite some users who weren't very happy with Maltic's update process because it wasn't really bulletproof. There were a lot of reasons why it could fail. And that's something I wanted to tackle in the upgrade script. So what I did is I basically built in a lot of pre-upgrade checks, like do you have the right PHP version, database version, uh, like a lot of those checks, I think in total maybe seven or eight, I don't really remember, um, just to ensure that people had a smooth upgrade experience. And this is typical under the hood work because it doesn't uh, introduce any new features to the product, but it helped me to take the whole bunch of work that uh, mostly Acquia did to get Mautic 3 out of the door because there were a lot of under the hood upgrades there as well. And I wanted to show my contribution by making that whole upgrade process as smooth as possible for people so that we could move forward with things because um, the thing is like a lot of engineers worked full time for multiple months just to update all the under the hood things from Matic so there weren't any new features. So we were really working hard with a very dedicated and passionate team of people to get Matic 3 out of the door. So yeah, code for me remains the thing where, I, where I'm happy to contribute. But I also joined Maltic's product teams, uh, product team and the leadership team. And here it's a lot more about strategy, like what kind of features do we want to introduce, like the Maltic marketplace? Uh, where does the product need to go in a few years from now? So the, the, the long-term strategy. And that's what I really enjoyed doing because we, we come together with a group of very passionate people from different areas, uh, community management, uh, um, entrepreneurs, uh, developers, they, they're from everywhere, also from all over the world. And together we build a strategy for, uh, for the product and where it should go. So what I really want to advise you here is if you want to contribute to an open source project, really look at something you're good at and enjoy doing. Especially the last part is important because if you do something that you enjoy, you are much more likely to remain involved over a long time period. And of course, there's always things that need to happen that you do not necessarily like, um, but that need to happen to move the product forward. So really make sure that you see, that you look into the vision of uh, an open source product like Matic, and then see how you can contribute to that vision based on your skills and experience. Um, I understand that for, for some people it might be, uh, yeah, a, a high barrier to start contributing to, to a product. But just remember that you probably have a lot more experience and knowledge about a very specific field than 90 or 95% of uh, multi users or even people in the community. So your contribution really helps. Um, so this is one that, what I want to, uh, to give as a tip, really look into uh, what, what gives you energy and uh, where you can contribute best, where you can offer the most value. Now, contributing to open source in free time, you'll notice that once you start working in an open source community, that most of the people, they do the work in their free time. Now, this is, I think, great because people then are so passionate about something that they are willing to spend their free time on it and not get anything back in return. Um, the thing is, how do you combine that with private life and work? Because I know there are some companies who offer 
employees to work on open source products for a certain amount of hours per week. Uh, but most people don't have that option. So you will have to contribute in the evenings, in the weekends. So basically all your spare time. And to be honest, things for me got a bit out of hand in 2020 with Maltic. Uh, because the more time I spent on the product, the more passionate I became about it as well. Um, the thing is I have my, my own company, which comes first because I have to serve my customers, of course. Um, but Mautic was only five, maximum 10% of my business. So why would I spend so much time at a product that is not necessarily related to, uh, yeah, to my, my products or my services? Um, the, the simple reason is that I'm just very passionate about open source and technology in general, but I also wanted to get more experience with um, managing a community, which will have a session uh, on later today in the same track here. Um, but it was for me just a no brainer to get started and to contribute. So some things I've learned, just to give you some examples, I have been managing product ideas in a backlog together with the product team. So the thing is, if you work in a community for open source, there's a lot of people involved and they all have ideas. Now, how do you channel all those ideas and uh, deal with them most efficiently? We found some ways to do that efficiently and we'll share more about it, um, Ruth and I, in a later session. Um, but I also learned things like working on strategy in a collaborative environment. Like here on the right-hand side, you see uh, some people from the leadership team. And whenever we have those calls, you just see that they're there's a lot of energy and a lot of uh, willingness to move the product forward and to make a lot of, of other always fast and quick. So uh, in the early days, also of Mautic, it was very easy to come up with new features because there's nothing yet. Um, just imagine it, just uh, compare it to building a house, for example. If you have nothing, it's much easier to get started and to build a foundation and then build on top of it than that you have to, uh, for example, fix the existing foundation of a house. So um, that's where technical debt and legacy come in. And I really did not expect so much time to go into managing uh, all this legacy and to make sure that Malta just keeps running as it does. So here we're not even talking about new features, um, but just to keep the product running and to uh, let it confirm to daily standards. I mean, uh, exa an example is just that Malta needs to be responsive, for example. There's a lot of devices out there, browsers change, sorry, a browsers change basically uh, on a weekly basis. There's just so much happening in the industry that it's, it takes a lot of time to keep up with all those developments apart from the features that you want to introduce. So um, I was spending a lot of time in my, in my weekends and evenings to work on Matic. Um, and sometimes it was even interfering with my normal work because at some point we just came up with deadlines. You saw it, there were releases. They had to get out there uh, because we wanted to uh, to actually keep up with our promises because we say we released on a certain date, we need to do it. So um, it becomes even more difficult if your company or your work isn't necessarily related to the product. So Matic in this sense, for me, like I said, it was only five, maybe 10% of the product. So I got to admit, it's, it's been, it's been difficult sometimes, but I got a lot of positive feedback from the community as well. And I see a lot of interaction and the community is really starting to flourish. And that's, uh, that's what makes me really happy and gives me the energy to, to keep contributing to Matic. Now, if I could give three tips, if you want to uh, support open source in your free time, the first and most important one would be to time box your work for open source. Starting in Q3, I put a time limit of 80 hours on open source and for Q4, 40 hours, because there are really things I need to get done with my own company and to keep things running there as well. 
Um, and to time box things that has really helped me because I know that I spend a certain amount of hours per week on a product and um, that, yeah, that just makes it a lot easier to not get distracted and keep, keep working on things. So that together with point two, clearly defining the scope of your work um, helps with that as well. So if I say, for example, okay, I'm going to work on the upgrade script for Mautic 2 to 3. Um, it's going to take around uh, 10 or no, 14 hours. Then I'll just work for seven weeks, two hours a week on it. If the community is okay with that, then I'll go ahead and do it. It just makes uh, managing your own time a lot easier as well. Plus the community knows what to expect from you. Now the last one part I want to mention here is consider donating money if time is an issue. Now, open a lot of people say that open source is free. Um, sure, it, you can download it and get started with it, but you're also responsible for managing it yourself. Like if you install Mautic, you are responsible for doing updates and making sure that it keeps running stable for your customers. So uh, there's basically two things you can do here if time really is an issue for you. One is that you can actually uh, work with a commercial company that offers Maltic. There's plenty of them out there. And they'll, they'll make sure that everything keeps running, that you can send emails, that they do the updates. Um, and at the same time, they very often contribute back to Maltic as a product as well. So that way you can use Maltic. You don't have to put any time into contributing, but because of your financial uh, relationship that you have with the partner, um, they, they'll make sure to contribute back to the, to the product and make sure to ask them for that as well. Like before you start working with them, ask them if they contribute back to the open source community. Second option here is if, to donate money directly into, uh, into Mautic funds, which is possible nowadays via, I think, GitHub and Open Collective. Um, now these are great platforms to donate money if you want to. And that way you will ensure that, uh, that for the future, there will be more contributions. There will be events like this one, Multicon, because all of those are mostly uh, paid with that money, also from some larger sponsors. So those are the three tips I would like to give you for if you want to support uh, open source in your free time. Now, another thing I came across was that I was getting questions from people directly to help them with setting up Multic, etc. Um, even though people appreciate your knowledge and experience a lot, it's difficult for me to keep up with those questions because at some point my Slack was just exploding uh, together with uh, direct messages on the forums. And what really helped for me is to try and move all those conversations to the forums because it's a public, uh, public way of communicating. Everyone can, can jump in there. Plus everything is indexed by search engines like Google. So if someone uses certain keywords, they'll very likely end up at the forum and find a solution that someone else came up with already. So what really helped for me was to direct those questions, if I got them, to the forums or to more to open, uh, open community, communities, because otherwise it just, you become sort of a support desk which is not fair to expect, in my opinion, from open source contributor, contributors. So it's always better to, um, to move that to a public forum, for example. Now, there are some pros and cons to being able to code in open source. Um, of course, you can help the product to move forward, like I uh, I, I created Mautic's upgrade script for Mautic 3. It also makes reviewing other people's work easy, easier uh, because you know what's happening behind the scenes. But the downside for me was that I also started to feel responsible to fix certain critical bugs because you see them coming up after you did a release and then you're like, oh no, I, this is really an ugly bug and we need to fix it. Um, and then if nobody has the time to work on it, I'm very tempted to, dump, to jump into it and to start working on it. It also might introduce technical bias because you know how the product works behind the scenes, like what's happening technically, and that might bias the discussions you have in the community. So a normal user who doesn't have the technical knowledge will be much closer to what is actually needed for users. 
So I think that's some, something that a community needs to make sure is that you have a good balance between those people. But I got to admit that sometimes it's a bit hard to zoom out for me coming from this code perspective. Um, but it's, uh, we, I mean, we're all learning, we're all sharing experiences, we're in a collaborative environment. So um, it's something you learn to work with. So um, to wrap things up and to look forward, like what's going to happen in the coming weeks or months for in regards to my contributions, is to bring my contributions more in line with my dependency on Motic which is currently quite low. Like I mentioned, five to maximum 10% of my business has to do with Motic. Um, and it's really not, not worth that much of my time to, to contribute so much to the product. I mean, I love doing it. I get a lot of energy from it, but the business needs to run as well. And um, that's just something I need to focus on in the coming months. I'll still be around uh, just a, a bit less. Um, more on a strategic level, I think, less in the code. I'll be reviewing code uh, from others, which I hope will help to move the community and move forward. And I really want to make sure that we lower the barrier for new contributors to step up. So this is both for, uh, this is true for developers, for marketeers, for translators, for all those people to actually jump in and help make Mozic even more awesome. Because we've seen a steady increase in community contributions, which we'll also share in the session I have with Rudd later today. Um, so yeah, to, to, to summarize, I think my year with Mothic has been incredible. It's just great to see the product moving forward so much again. Um, and I'm very excited for what's gonna happen in the coming months with the product. Um, so yeah, I would really like to thank you for, for listening to my story. I hope it helped you in some way. And if you're considering to contribute, then sure, may, make sure to reach out. I think we have a dedicated a place for this in the event platform. So uh, make sure to make yourself heard. And a lot of people will be more than happy to welcome, to, to welcome you to the community. Um, I just wanted to give you a bit of information because there's two more sessions that are coming up soon, which are also about community contributions. Uh, one about how non-programmers can contribute to open source and Mothic. I think it could be a great addition to what I just shared from the technical perspective. And then we have managing contributions in, in an open source project. That's a session which I'll be doing with Ruth uh, together. And we'll be talking about the technical perspective and the human perspective of that. So be sure to check those out as well. Both sessions are also here in track four. And that's it for my presentation. I would like to thank you for, for listening. And if you have any questions, then please make sure to, uh, to make yourself heard in the link below. Now, I'll uh, have a quick look if there are any questions that came in already. So just give me a few seconds. Uh, that would be here. <laughs> I got a question from John who's saying, have you considered working for Acquia? Um, I got to say it would be a lot of fun, to be honest. I think there's a great team uh, at Acquia with a lot of energy to, uh, to move things forward with the product. Um, however, I got to say that my focus currently is on my, my own company, which I very much enjoy doing. I have great customers as well. So maybe in the future. Who knows? I mean, it's it's been a pleasure to work with you, John, personally as well, um, and with the other people at, at Acquia and everyone else in the community. So uh, yeah, who knows? Maybe in the future. <laughs> so I, I don't, as I don't see any other uh, questions, I would like to uh, to wrap things up here, unless someone uh, someone else has a question. And um, we're gonna have a break soon. Um, I think it's. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be starting now, actually. And then it will be for around an hour. So if you have any questions, uh, you can always feel free to reach out to me uh, in the event platform or also on, on Twitter uh, or Motic Slack. Uh, just look up Dennis Ameling and you'll be able to find me. 
So once again, thank you very much for, uh, for listening to, to my presentation. And I hope to see you in other sessions today. Uh, there's a lot of exciting things coming up in track four. So be sure to, uh, to check it out. And I wish everyone um, a very, very exciting rest of Multicon.